just trying to make it all make sense. The more you know podcast. So today I want to discuss something that I recently read in Wayne Dyer's book, Manifest Your Destiny, surrounding having self-worth. So self-worth ultimately breeds confidence, which is a vital trait in creating a life of significance as well as finding success in any endeavor. Along with that, it's crucial towards finding fulfillment, happiness, and joy in life. So in his book, Wayne broke down five common perspectives shared by people with high levels of self-worth, and he also shared an 11-step plan for establishing self-worth in your own life. I want to go over both, and I'm going to first break down the five perspectives, and then from there, his 11-step plan. Taking this all into account will increase your level of self-worth no matter who you are and assist in propelling you down creating a life of significance. So the first major perspective that people with high levels of self-worth have is the understanding that their self-esteem comes from within. Your self-esteem, your self-worth, and and what you choose to build confidence surrounding, it must all come from within. It must come from yourself. If it doesn't, you're putting it in the power of other people, other events, and other outcomes, which are largely out of your control, and therefore your level of self-esteem, self-worth, and confidence is out of your control. The second major perspective that those who have a high level of self-worth share is accepting themselves without complaint. And what this means is that they accept themselves for the good and the bad. They understand that they aren't perfect and that they're going to make mistakes. And they don't allow themselves to fall into some form of self-pity. What this is is ultimately self-acceptance from an unconditional perspective, as well as not allowing for self-rejection. The third common perspective from those who have a high level of self-worth is taking full responsibility for their lives, as well as what their lives are and what their lives aren't. And what goes along with taking this responsibility is ultimately being honest with yourself. The fourth perspective that those who have high levels of self-worth commonly share is to choose not to accept guilt into their life. And this goes along with the past perspectives surrounding self-acceptance and accepting who you are and being honest with who you are. You can't fall into self-pity and you must be honest with yourself in order to avoid guilt. And not accepting guilt in your life requires that you understand the difference between two things. And these are a genuine regret where you can learn from the past and then remaining in a state of reproach or guilt. So the first one of having a genuine regret that you've learned from, that's not accepting guilt into your life. That's just being self-aware and also ties into the self-acceptance of you are who you are and you aren't perfect and that's okay with you. The second one, where you remain in a state of reproach or guilt in the present moment, that's where you're accepting guilt into your own life and that's what you must avoid. The fifth and final perspective commonly shared by those who have high levels of self-worth is understanding the importance of having harmony between their thoughts, their feelings, and their behavior. It's very important to have balance in life, and if there isn't congruency between how you think, how you feel, and how you act, you will struggle with having a high level of self-worth purely because it's hard to understand who you truly are. Now that we understand these five common perspectives that those who have a high level of self-worth share, I now want to go over the 11-step plan that Wayne shared in this book to help establish higher levels of self-worth. The first step of the plan is to embrace the word inspiration, which literally means to be infused with spirit. From there, practice doing what you love and loving what you do every single day, and this will therefore put you in spirit or inspiration. From there, the next step is to make every effort to remove internal habits of pessimism, judgment, negativity, criticism, complaints, gossip, being resentful or cynical, as well as finding faults in yourself or others. Removing these habits from your vocabulary and your inner dialogue will help shift your mindset towards having higher levels of self-worth, joy, gratitude, happiness, and much more. The next step is regardless of how much you may be tempted to go back towards these cynical habits, you must stay strong as you build these new habits or break these poor habits. 
The next step is to give yourself quiet time each day to erase feelings of unworthiness. And what this means is to take some time to meditate or pray or whatever else you want to call it to remove any doubts that you have and instill self-worth in yourself. The next step is to immerse yourself in spiritual readings, as well as other outlets like music and podcasts. When you immerse yourself in things that surround spirituality, it's very interesting because what it does is it just seems to assist in putting everything into perspective. The next step ties into this previous step, which is to do spiritual homework, which is simply just studying various spiritual perspectives to assist in increasing your own perspective and your own self-worth. The next step is to allow yourself to be surrounded by things of beauty as much as possible. And this assists in the inspiration which we'd previously discussed as being important, as well as what I discussed in the previous steps just surrounding assisting in establishing perspective. When you experience beauty, it just has a tendency to remove the doubt that you have about your own life, as well as your connection to everyone and everything. The next step is to practice kindness towards yourself as well as others, as frequently as possible. And I want to emphasize being kind to yourself, because I think a lot of people who focus on being kind in general can lose sight of being kind towards themselves, and this will get in the way of your self-worth, as well as causing other issues with your mentality and your thought patterns. It's important to be as kind to yourself as you are to others, and vice versa. The next step is to begin to process the universe as a friendly rather than an unfriendly environment. And what I think Wayne means by this is something surrounding what I've discussed many times of life is happening for you, not to you, and that the universe is all connected in this beautiful and infinite way. And the final step is to continually think about this and say this over and over again to yourself until it's fully registered into your subconscious. And this is that I am what I am, and I am worthy of the abundance that is the universe and all that is in it, including me. Keeping these five common perspectives that those who have high levels of self-worth share, that's important for you to share as well, along with the 11-step plan for establishing self-worth in your life, will put you down the path of knowing that you're worthy, having a high level of self-worth, and then therefore create high levels of success with your pursuits, as well as establishing a life of significance. I hope this talk makes a positive impact in your life. Please subscribe to the podcast wherever you are listening or watching it. Check out other episodes, leave a review, and follow us on social media at More You Know Pod. Also, please don't forget about our sweepstakes. Retweet a clip with the hashtag The More You Know and New Podcast from our Twitter for a chance to win a signed copy of my upcoming book, The More You Know. Tag two friends in the comments on a clip on Instagram for a chance to win a brand new copy of Dean Graziosi's Millionaire Mindset or Ed Milet's Max Out. Like us or share a clip on Facebook for a chance to win a book I have read that highly inspired me, signed by me with an inspirational message. Again, thank you for listening as we provide hell with podcasting through the more you know. I'm just trying to make it all make sense. The more you know podcast.